सारा आलम खंदक है और आदमी बंधक है कदम कदम बारूद बिछा है सांस सांस में गंधक है मैंस वॉन्टन एंड विलफुल इंटरफेरेंस इन द सिस्टम ऑफ नेचर हैज ग्रेजुअली ब्रॉट अस टू द क्रॉस रोड्स वे इवन द सिंपल एक्ट ऑफ गेटिंग अ लंग फुल ऑफ फ्रेश एयर has become a luxury in the rat race for progress and development we have not hesitated in destroying all that constituted our very existence the whole atmosphere has become sulfurous industrialization has led to urbanization and one of the greatest problems faced by urbanites is that of atmospheric pollution according to a study conducted recently it was found that 60% of this pollution was caused due to vehicular pollution delhi registered 70% bombay 45% and calcutta 25 to 30% of pollution due to vehicles at present there are 50 lakh scooters and autos about 20 lakh mopeds 20 lakh diesel powered vehicles and about 18 lakh cars It is estimated that at the turn of the century the number of two wheelers will have crossed 1 crore and there will be 90 lakh mopeds cars and diesel driven vehicles will have crossed 30 lakhs Different kinds of vehicles pollute the atmosphere in different ways Vehicles that run on petrol or diesel release carbon monoxide hydrocarbons oxides of nitrogen and other secondary pollutants let us take a look at how these vehicles that are meant to make our hectic life comfortable end up as the bane of our existence the engine that is fitted in a vehicle is in some ways like our body The carburetor of a petrol vehicle resembles and functions like the human heart and lung. The carburetor mixes oxygen with the fuel and passes it on for combustion. But if the engine is malfunctioning and there is a shortage of oxygen, only incomplete combustion of fuel takes place. And this is where the vehicular pollution begins. whether engine is petrol or diesel a mixture of fuel and air is burnt inside the engine and under ideal conditions carbon dioxide and water vapors are produced but under real conditions due to many reasons the combustion of fuel is not complete and in addition to carbon dioxide and water vapor carbon monoxides unburnt hydrocarbons and oxides of nitrogen are produced along with carbon particles and other organic compounds these emissions emit emitted from the tailpipe of the vehicle pollute air carbon monoxide and oxides of nitrogen are injurious to human health tetraethylate is added into petrol as an anti knocking agent and it comes out after combustion as it is in the air and pollutes it while the human being breathes these fine particles of lead compound are inhaled and increases the toxicity in the human body the combustion of petrol and diesel are altogether different 
and therefore, emissions coming out from the petrol engine and diesel engines are also different. In case of petrol engine, carbon monoxide, unburnt hydrocarbons and oxides of nitrogen are in large quantities, whereas in case of diesel engine, the carbon particles, formaldehydes and other organic acids are in greater quantities. In order to reduce pollution from vehicles, advanced carburetor, a better ignition system and some modifications in the engine are made. But majority of pollutants are reduced by the use of catalytic converters in the tailpipe of the vehicle. The catalytic converter is a muffler like construction in which chemicals are filled. These chemicals help in oxidation of carbon monoxide and hydrocarbons while in the reduction of oxides of nitrogen. In two wheelers like scooters and motorbikes, the two stroke engines are most commonly used. Due to their construction, the two stroke engines produce more hydrocarbons and uh, carbon monoxide as compared to four stroke engines. If four stroke en engines are used in two wheelers, then their fuel efficiency will improve, thus reducing consumption of fuel as well as the air pollution from two wheelers. A sign of our being alive is breathing. When we breathe, we are alive. Inhaling and exhaling is non-stop, continuous and lifelong. We are not even conscious that we breathe. It is a habit. सांस लेना भी कैसी आदत है जिए जाना भी क्या रवायत है सांस लेना भी कैसी आदत है जिए जाना Do you think breathing is possible in these circumstances? In this stifling atmosphere, breathing is a compulsion. Who would prefer to take a lungful of this poison? Perhaps we are fated to breathe these noxious fumes. The problem of air pollution is directly related to our respiratory system. And as we have just seen, a major part of air pollution in urban areas is because of vehicle emission. Oxygen is essential for life. It is our first requirement. And this oxygen reaches all the cells of our body through blood. The transfer of oxygen to blood takes part in the alveoli of the lungs where oxygen diffuses through a very thin membrane to the blood and combines with the hemoglobin contained in the blood to form oxyhemoglobin. Oxyhemoglobin is an unstable compound. As oxyhemoglobin, the oxygen is carried to the various target organs and cells. At the required site, oxyhemoglobin again dissociates into oxygen and hemoglobin and oxygen is taken up by the cells for their various metabolic functions. The various pollutants in the air not only decrease the percentage of oxygen but also interfere in the transfer of oxygen to the blood. For example, one of the pollutants, carbon monoxide, 
has a greater affinity for hemoglobin than oxygen and so it readily combines with hemoglobin to form carboxyhemoglobin. This carboxyhemoglobin is a stable compound, is more stronger than oxyhemoglobin and so it does not dissociate into oxygen or carbon monoxide and hemoglobin. As a result, the cells suffer from chronic oxygen deprivation. As it is obvious, a large amount of carbon monoxide will instantly kill a person, but small amounts can also be dangerous. The usual initial symptoms are irritability, weakness, tiredness, and a decrease in the memory power and alertness. These can become serious over a long period of time. Apart from this, the various pollutants in vehicle emission directly act as an irritant to the respiratory tract and leads to a number of respiratory disorders like bronchial asthma, recurrent respiratory tract infections and a decrease in respiratory capacity. While these pollutants increase the number of respiratory disorders, it really worsens the conditions of those patients who are already suffering from respiratory diseases. Everything that is expected to make life happy is available under the dazzling lights of the city, except for a breath of fresh air. The sources of oxygen are vanishing, whereas its demand is ever increasing. The lusterless leaves of the trees that stand as mute witnesses on either side of the roads appear to have admitted defeat at the hands of the smoke-spewing vehicles. Pure and clean air is vanishing from our cities. It will no longer be a fantasy. Yes, oxygen booths, very soon like the milk kiosks or telephone booths, will soon make their appearance on the city roadsides. We have to do something to get out of this miserable plight. It is cent percent true that vehicles are absolute necessities today, but equally true is the need to use and maintain them correctly. Some points to remember. Get your vehicle checked regularly. Use fuel and oil in the correct proportion. Get the tires checked for the correct pressure. Get the carburetor and spark plug cleaned. Use your vehicle only when it is necessary. If we adopt some very simple practices, then we shall be able to carry out our duties towards nature. Because it is not the government's duty alone to protect the environment, but the duty of every single individual. Music